Oh hey, welcome back to my channel Endless Pages, I'm Liv, welcome to another reading wrap up. So it is Saturday night, I'm having a very chill, quiet night in, my perfect kind of night. Got a glass of wine and we're just going to go through the books I read in the month of September. So in September I I failed the readathons I was meant to be participating in. I feel like that's pretty obvious that I failed. I always fail, so just assume if I'm going to be participating in a readathon, I'm going to fail it miserably. But that being said, I am pretty happy with what I read. I have quite mixed opinions this um, this wrap up. I feel like again, like my last wrap up. Some of my opinions are not going to be very popular. Starting off the month, I read an absolutely remarkable thing by Hank Green. This is a book about this girl called April May and she's walking home in New York one morning at like 2am and she comes across this statue, just huge statue just sitting there. It looks kind of like a mix between like a transformer and a samurai. And she calls up her friend and she like films this YouTube video around the statue and she uploads it and then they wake up the next morning and they realise they are the first people who have documented interacting with this statue and these statues have suddenly popped up across major cities across the world and the book is a discussion about um yeah I guess what happens when you go internet famous. So yeah, I have mixed opinions about this book. I'm really scared because I know this is a really, really well-loved book. I struggled to get through this book, but at the same time I didn't. I don't know. I really enjoyed the story. I thought it was really cool and unique. And I really liked the... There was this... Without spoiling it, there's this whole thing around dreams in this book. That's all I'll say because otherwise it's a bit of a spoiler. I really liked that. I thought that was really cool and unique. Um, the only thing I have against this book I think is I guess how much the story is taken over by the commentary on internet fame. So obviously that's the point of the book and you're exploring that with April May as she deals with and gets just thrown headfirst into the world of overnight pretty much stardom and the troubles that come with it, the money, the lifestyle, um, that addiction to once you have it, that need to hold on to that. And that was really great commentary and that was really interesting, especially growing up with that kind of generation of internet celebrity, but I find that it was too much. There was too much of it. it. Kind of slowed the story down because you would just have chapters on chapters on chapters on the commentary around that. Like, don't get me wrong, it was brilliantly written commentary because it's Hank Green and he's a very smart guy. I just feel like it kind of eventually started taking me out of the story and was a little bit too much commentary. Where he's kind of told back to you in a recount from April, May of the events that go down and as I've said a couple of times it's about her dealing with the quick and sudden rise to fame being internet famous and I can understand how our main character makes silly decisions because I, th I think if I was suddenly like famous overnight and thousands of people hold on to your every word and want to hear from you, I think any person would easily fall into that trap of getting obsessed with that. Because, I mean, yeah, who wouldn't want to get that, I guess, that uh, verification from other people that you're important, your voice wants to be heard and they want to see you. Of course that would just rise your self-esteem and I could totally see myself getting addicted to that. But I feel like at the same time, she's a really smart character, but made some, personally, some decisions that weren't great. And if I was her friend, I would be mad at how I was treated. Because, she, yeah, she really let her relationships just, yeah, as soon as she was famous, her relationships were just, she kind of destroyed them herself and she didn't prioritise those relationships. And I get that that was kind of the point, but I didn't like her for that. I thought, like, she was selfish and she wasn't a really good friend. And so that's why I didn't really like it as well, because I didn't like her character, so it annoyed me to read from her perspective. So I ended up rating an absolutely remarkable thing, only three stars, just... I understand the point of it. I think it did 
the commentary on internet fame very well and money very well. I liked that. It was a really unique plotline. Just not for me. I can see why other people love this. I just personally didn't like really super connect with it that much. So kind of disappointing start to the reading month. Speaking of unpopular opinions, I then read Dial A for Aunties by Jessie Sitanto. So I was really looking forward to this one and didn't really vibe with it. It is about our main character whose name is Medi, that's it. And um, Medi goes on a blind date one night and accidentally ends up killing the blind date and calls her four aunties for help. Um, her and her aunties run a wedding business and they have like the biggest wedding of their company coming up and it happens to be held at the venue that's managed by Medi's ex. So that's the basic plot line. I thought this book was fun, I'll give you that. It was very like wholesome and there were some cute moments. Personally for me I think it was too silly. Like obviously I know to suspend my disbelief, I just feel like it was too silly for me. Uh, the detective character was just too stupid to to be believable. Um, I think that was, yeah. Everyone would just seem to be very dumb in this book and I found that it was too silly. I really loved the family moments with Jessie and her aunties and to experience that dynamic um, was really lovely and I appreciated that. I just found that some of the dialogue was quite repetitive as well. Yeah, I just, it was too silly for me. I, I, I don't really read a lot of contemporary stuff. So I just don't think that this was my type of book at all. I don't think it's the book's fault. I think it's a personal me thing. Just I was never going to like this book. But again, I could see how people could really appreciate this light-hearted, cute romance. I definitely will not be picking up the sequel. I rated this three stars, yeah. A too silly, like not my kind of thing at all. But I know other people would absolutely love this book because it's, it's, it's fun. Next up, I read Saga Volume 2. Check out how sick this cover is. This is about two people on this opposite side of uh, opposite sides of a galactic war, and they risk it all by like falling in love and bringing a child into the world. So it is about keeping that child safe. I had a really good time reading this one. I feel like I'm slowly getting more emotionally um, connected to the characters and emotionally drawn to the story. There were some like tear joking, tear jerker moments in this. Like there were some upsetting moments. It was really sad. It was interesting to get to know a bit of the backstory of our main two characters a bit more as well. Um, I find that it takes my full concentration because there are some like really confusing moments and some uh, some questionable monster designs. Some some stuff I I wasn't ready to see but I saw. Um, so yeah, I forget how adult this is sometimes, but. Yeah, I gave it four stars. I don't really have much to say other than I'm now emotionally invested. Um, the character design is cool. Some of them are questionable, but they're cool. And I'm really excited to see where this goes because um, I'm having fun with it. It's a little bit confusing at times. You just really have to focus because there's a lot of different players. But that keeps it interesting and fast paced because you're jumping from person to person. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. So the next two books come with a bit of a story because, yeah, I wasn't vlogging when um, something ha this happened and I wanted to tell you guys about it. So I went to a book uh, signing event, a fantasy night at Dimmix, a couple of nights ago, which was so much fun, by the way. Great time. So good. Um, and at the event uh, was Stacey McEwen and Alicia Jasinska. I'll pop them here. So this is a photo of me with them. I met them. They were both so down to earth, so lovely. And Lynette Noni was there, but virtually as well, unfortunately. But yeah, it was so fun to see Alicia Jasinska, one of the biggest names in fantasy, and Stacey McEwen, someone I've been following on TikTok for so long and support some amazing Aussie authors. So this does have context to the book haul, I swear. So when I was, I tried to read a couple of their books before I went to the event, obviously. So before I tell you about the books I read, I just want to show you. I got them signed! So good! So I got Ledge signed, and then I got The Dark Tide signed. Um, yeah, and then I got The Midnight Girls signed. So cool. Um, and I... Uh, told her I was like I just finished this book a couple of minutes ago so she gave me a little exclusive like art card of the two main lovely ladies from the Midnight Girls so 
that was sick and then for going I got an exclusive little Blood Trader bookmark. It's really nice quality too. The Blood Trader is the third and final book in the Prison Healer trilogy. So that was so cool. So um, yeah, that's that. <laughs> so next up, I read Because of the Event, Ledge by Stacey McEwan. This is her debut book. Uh, this is um, kind of new adult and I forgot that going in. So there was some spice and I was just like, yeah, shocked by it. But it was like, it was a good surprise because I'm just read a lot of YA where they, you know, fade to black. So it was a nice little surprise. A girl called um, Dawson, and Dawson lives on the ledge, which is this grueling environment um, on a mountain um, that just like is surrounded by this chasm. So basically, there's no escape without dying, without falling into the chasm. So every season, um, these winged creatures called glacians turn up and they demand a sacrifice. So every year, they take a couple of people from this village. And this year Dawson is chosen. So uh, Dawson meets this half glacian called Ryan who um, helps her, um, offers to help her escape. So that's that. I really had a good time with this book. So the start of this book is like, starts off with this amazing world building and these amazing descriptions of the harsh environment of the ledge and everything Dawson must do to survive and what she has become to survive. Um, yeah, I guess the, the harsh environment and what the people are like living on the ledge. So that's kind of the first little bit of the book. We don't spend heaps of time there, but I found the, um, the descriptions and the world building of that, like, fantastic. And then the other half of the book is basically following the escape. So there's quite a, I guess, a stark, if that's the right word, there's a quite a big change in... Uh, yeah, change in what the book's about. Like, it starts off with this really slow atmospheric to this fast-paced kind of escape with lots of really good banter. So it was a good mix. I really, like, I guess it was a good way of doing it because I really got in because of the great writing, the world, being, world building at the start. But then you stay for the kind of slow burn romance and the super awesome banter. That is your typical like fantasy romance, like enemies to lovers banter. If you love banter, like you're gonna get filled with this book. Like it's great banter. Um, and so I really enjoyed, I guess, yeah, it balanced each other out. I enjoyed it. I, the description got me in at the start and the banter kept me reading at the end. So this is the first book in a trilogy. So I'm really excited to see where this goes because um, as a typical fantasy romance, it has a very shocking, uh, kind of cliffhangery end. Um, mind the pardon, because it's the ledge cliffhanger, whatever. Um, yeah, so I really enjoyed this book. I gave it four stars. Um, great banter, some nice and spicy scenes. So if you're looking for a new spicy book, it's, it's pretty spicy. So I enjoyed that very much. So the final book I read this month, and it, this was also for the event, was The Midnight Girls by Alicia Jasinska. So this was really good. This is about two monstrous girls and they're both kind of servants for for different witches and their rivals. They've been rivals forever. And they're both given the same task of taking, literally ripping out the heart of this prince who has a pure heart. So it's super powerful. So it's about the rivalry, but also it starts to brew into a romance as well. So you've got that um, contradictory like nature of um, their rivals but they're also kind of falling in love um, so I think I found a new favorite trope rivals to like rivals to lovers it's it's really good so this is basically the whole book is about them trying to outdo each other and take the prince's heart for themselves but also both of them struggling with that inner dialogue of like oh my god I really like this girl so it is a very cute lesbian romance I had a fantastic time. Um, Alicia Jasinska said like the settings kind of inspired by like Polish Slavic kind of folklore. So the world was, um, while it was not the main setting of the, the, it wasn't super to be focused on, but it was still very well, um, threshed out and, uh, threshed out, fleshed out. Um, so that was amazing. The writing is beautiful. There is so many, I just want to go back with a highlighter. There's so many beautiful quotes. Alicia Jasinska is a fantastic writer. This is my first book of hers and brilliantly written. And the romance was so cute. 
about I just I love enemies to lovers I love it so much I love that hatred that slowly grows into to love and um, Alicia just in Scare the Bed said something about something really interesting about going from hating each other to that admiration and respect because they're rivals so yeah that that was really clear in her writing it was beautiful it was so good it was so stressful and I just love reading about two incredibly strong powerful women being vulnerable with each other and yeah I it was it was great I had it the best time reading this I literally finished it like during the event like I quickly finished it it was so good I had a great time reading this it was really fun the plot was really fast paced there was it didn't really feel like there was any filler or slow moments like it just boom 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 it was it was good I should not do wrap ups with wine because I don't know if that was good or not but it's what you're gonna get so that was my wrap up for the month of September a all right start with a really really great ending I had such a good time going to the book event it was so fun um, I want to go to more book events now that they're kind of coming back since uh, COVID it was so lovely meeting Alicia and Stacey. Like I said, they were both so down to earth, so lovely, so well spoken. It was really interesting to listen to them, get photos with them and get our book signed. And get, it was lovely. So that was my reading month. Let me know in the comments below. Have you read anything I read? Do you have any differing opinions to the books that I read? What was your favourite book you read in September? Thank you so much for watching again. I'm going to go drink more wine and I'll see you in whatever the hell I post next. Bye!